are we trying to avoid? Um, what technologies exist? What technologies do we need to build WebGo? Did we introduce new ones? Are they compatible with our old ones? How will we support them? Right? Um, what's the impact on our information, our data model? How will we collect the data from all those different systems and rationalize them in some way that makes sense to the customer? Um, and then when it's time to get rid of WebGo, when it goes from WebGo to WebGone, um, is there something that we built that's useful to move forward? Did we think about separating our presentation from our application logic, from our business logic, from our resources, so that we get rid of the stupid, ugly green interface, but we can still use the business services that we built to support our processes moving forward? So we need to answer all of these questions as enterprise architects, not just the application or software architecture questions that we're used to answering. So when we build an application like WebGo or something, right, we create an, an architecture that describes how we're going to build web-based portal applications or how we're going to build enterprise integration applications or some style of application, how we're going to build those in our enterprise so that those applications are similar, so that we can plug and play pieces of one application to another, so that we can use common infrastructure, so that we can reduce maintenance, increase flexibility. So we have some set of application architectures, and then according to these architectures, we have some set of projects that we build. So we have an architecture and it tells us how to design something. Right? A, a design is for a single project and architecture is how we do many projects in this like ways. At the enterprise level, the important things right, are how all these different kinds of applications fit together. Right? So enterprise architecture is certainly concerned with these things, but it is also concerned with how we make all of these applications and different styles of applications fit together to support our enterprise. So we've got these complex systems are changing. Um, we need to align business. We've got lots of technology. We want to support revenue growth. We want to not be limited by our stovepipe applications. We want to be flexible. We want to leverage existing stuff. We want to improve time to market, cut down costs. You know, it's like, what's an architect to do? Well, let's take a look. So here is our, our beautiful user interface again, right? <laughs> and, and to implement this, what's, you know, what's really involved? I mean, this is, a, this is actually a, quite an application integration problem because, you know, we have our home phone and our internet and our mobile phones and our mobile internet and our television and, and who knows what, our messaging services. Um, we've got provisioning information that we're connecting in here. We've got service level agreements. We have billing. We have marketing information, fault management systems, customer relationship management, lots of different applications that we need to combine together to meet these business goals. So we might start with some kind of a conceptual architecture. Right? And, and when I do architectures, I always start with, with a, you know, a PowerPoint picture that explains in relatively non-technical uh, graphics what we're trying to achieve. This is sort of the primary communications mechanism of, uh, to really to everybody. I mean, there's, I'm assuming there's really no one in this room who can't look at this and s sort of understand what it says, right? And what does a conceptual architecture tell us? Well, it says, here's the users that I'm gonna support. Here's the system that I'm building. This is what's within the system. These are the things that aren't within what I'm building. 
Here's the 